Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Plays of Binding of Isaac after birth. Plus 25 wins. Hey, this is this is uh, important a milestone as any. Yikes, dude. K7, W9, KR, D9. Stats are great. You, you, the elephant in the room here is apparent, okay? We have the D100. Now, I've been a little bit more conservative lately with my D100 performances. I haven't been necessarily, including dice rooms, which are D100s of a different variety, I suppose. But I haven't been as aggressive with the D100s. Hey, we got a one run. Let's roll it for fun, you know? It's part of a, a great maturing, I think. I will say, you gotta give me a minute here, okay? I plan to use the D100, for sure, a lot. I'm just, I don't want to use the D100 until I know where we're at. And we, if we didn't have Curse of the Unknown, it would be the easiest thing in the world. I would probably already have popped it, assuming our, I don't know, if our HP was great, I probably would have popped it. Um, or I wouldn't have popped it on this floor. But if our HP was terrible, I, I definitely would have. But there's no point in popping it until we get some more items. Let me put it that way. I have to be honest, having been hit once very much makes me want to pop the D100. Because you never know, we could be operating on a half heart right now and not even know it. So here's what we're going to do, okay? We're going to come down here, grab a spirit heart, hopefully. Life is but a dream. Now, <laughs> my brain is trying to betray me, because immediately after I grabbed that spirit heart, it sent a little neurological message down the, the axon, and it said, hey, now you can afford to go to the curse room. And I went, brain, no, you're going to get in trouble. You guys, everything is weird. I was thinking about this uh, in the bathroom today. You know, what's the main course called? An entree. What does that mean in French? Starter. Then I got to think about it even more. And I was like, you ever think it's weird? And you're gonna say no, and that's fine. That's I, I don't ask rhetorical questions. I want an answer to every question I ever ask. So let me get this. Okay, first stop. Entrees are the main part of your meal, not a starter. And yet, a main method in a program is the first method that runs when your program executes. It's the method from which uh, all other program control is directed. So it's... You're telling me mains are both starters and on... Tr okay, I don't know where I'm going with this, but... You know, that there's a very, very thin intersection between haute cuisine humor and uh, programmer humor, and I was trying to find it. Did it work? I would say the answer to that question is probably not. Now... You might be wondering, NL, why didn't you pick up uh, Holy Light? Let me uh, answer your question with another question. Does Holy Light rule? Yes. So, we're going to reroll everything. And then we're going to pick up Holy Light. Just in case. This is an insulation from our first reroll maybe not being that good. I think that's a smart move. Now, I'd like to get over five cents if possible. If four cents is, is where we finish, then so be it, brother. I'll head down to the next floor and caffeinate a little bit. Okay, lots of good stuff. Let me tell you, HP is great. Two of diamonds, two of hearts, two of hearts, the tower. Wow! Four cards and uh, combined value, a penny each total. Now, you're a little tricky, but this... Oh, 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 oh! oh. You're not that tricky. Not as tricky as you think you are. Especially with Holy Light. Oh good, another card. <laughs> the Chariot. You know what? It's a cowardice choice, but... Uh, I don't want to keep these on the mental hard drive, you know what I mean. Let's just take our six cents, get the heck out of town. Yo, I was gonna use the Chariot, but... Holy Light is making me look like a friggin' genius. Okay, Hourglass. It's definitely like, if we're gonna D100, we should probably D100 on that room. We're starting to look pretty good. Now, you, you might need a refresher course. You know, maybe it's been a while since you watched some Isaac. Hasn't been a while since I've been producing it. I'll tell you that much. What do I do with the D100? We stop when we... Uh, there's a few different stop codons, you know? One of them is, uh... Is this run 
amazing and also cool. Like, strong and also a cool tier synergy effect. Um, that's not a secret room, huh? That's usually where we'll stop. Uh, is the run good enough and almost over? That's also where I'll stop. Because <laughs> otherwise, we'll die. And apart from that, you know, it's really a necessity is the mother of invention sort of situation. You know what I mean? So... You know, we, we want to reroll as much as possible to aggregate transformations. I guess it's aggregate transformations. Aggregate is like the passive form of the verb. Look, here's the thing, dude. I, I don't like the English language more than any of you guys. We're just stuck with it here. I'm always concerned. You know, I've had people message me. They say, you know, NL, by watching his videos, I learned how to speak English. And I'm like, oh, honey. People are going to think you're a snob. <laughs> That's, I mean, A, let me just start by saying it's incredibly flattering. Who would have thought I'd, I'd teach more English, not as an English teacher? All I'm going to say is that's what you get, a uh, Korean private school curriculum. I told you, you should have just let me get up there and lecture for a bit, but you were like, no, we have a curriculum. Okay, fair enough. Secondarily, dude, you got to mix in some... I don't know. Mix in some cops or something like that. Otherwise, you know, you'll, you'll go for a semester abroad in Chicago or something and be like, Ah, yes! Illinois. One of Sufjin Stevens' favorite states. What's your favorite song off of Come On, Feel the Illinois? Personally, I think it's uh, The Tallest Man, The Widest Shoulders. I like its Charles Schultzian piano and harpsichord themes. You're gonna end up getting killed. Not killed, but like, killed in terms of friendship. Ooh. <clears throat> These are great items. Uh, but still, the run is not that good, so I'm looking forward to the next D100, and hopefully the stats will kind of stick around a little. But so far, uh, very, very little to complain about. Yikes. Never going into that room again. You know, if that was on Love It or Listed, I'm mark me down for a neither. <laughs> it's one of the... I don't know why that makes me laugh. It's just... It's, it's such a bad joke that it, it might be the funniest thing I've ever heard. You know what? Let's reroll. Let's see what we get out of this. Thought maybe... I don't know, like finger bone. It might be worth something. You guys ever watch Wishbone growing up? So, look, there's no way to, if, you, if you're not familiar with Wishbone, there's no way to say it that doesn't make it sound ridiculous, but it's, uh, Wishbone was a television program for children uh, that was a retelling, like a, a reenactment, well, I guess it's not really a reenactment, because it's not real events, but they were dramatizations uh, of classic novels, you know, the Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn, uh, other classic novels that escape me. <laughs> but the main character was always played, don't laugh, by a dog. I know that this is not unique to my generation, by the way, but we had a lot of dog-based media, you know? Obviously, Air Bud is perhaps the most enduring legacy. It's, uh, you know, a sports movie, but the lead character is a dog. Well, the lead character are the friends we made along the way. But, you know, the central premise of the movie is there's no rule that says a dog can't play basketball. And it, there were multiple uh, other animal sports movies, in case you were not alive to be contemporaneous with these. Most Valuable Primate, that was a, um, it was a movie about, uh, I guess it was a chimpanzee that played ice hockey. They all pretty much followed the same formula. It would always be like a struggling team is like, Man, we're, we lost again. This season's a complete disaster. And then, like, nobody's supervising a chimpanzee that, like, the dad works at a university or something. And he's like, hey, we're going to have, uh, Chester's going to live with us for a bit for an experiment. And then he ends up getting on the ice. And then he takes a shot that looks like garbage. But then they cut away. And it's, like, an incredible, like, a slap shot you've never seen before. 
and you, you get the idea. And then he sometimes he ends up winning the championship, or sometimes he just ends up empowering the lead child actor to win the championship. Like, how are we gonna win without Chester? And then Chester just like points at the kid and then like points to his heart. And he's, You're, Chester's right, guys. We had the power to win the whole time within us. Yo, this run seems very interesting. Anyway, dude, I was thinking, like, Wishbone, what a good way to get kids uh, to accidentally engage in classic literature, right? I mean, it sounds like, I mean, if you're an adult and you're watching Wishbone, I know I get roasted for this stuff all the time, but I mean, like, whatever you're doing in your life is fine as long as you're not being a, you know, a bad person, I suppose. But I do feel like you're, you might be kind of, like, infantilizing yourself. It depends if you, are you watching it and being like... Bro, that dog is playing the Merchant of Venice right now. Or are you watching it and being like, I don't like to read books, I would rather just watch a half-hour dramatization starring a beagle. Anyway, I, I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life, but I will judge you silently. But for kids, you know, no kid is gonna, you know, I really would like to read The Old Man in the Sea right now. They probably didn't do that one, it's a little violent. Plus, it's a little weird to have a dog be the lead actor and have it, you know, murder the crap out of, like, a big swordfish. Anyway. It's a great book. Spoilers, I guess. You don't need to... I, I mean, how can I spoil it? It's 50 pages long. You read chapter one, it's a freaking spoiler to begin with. Don't start with me, brother. They still have that? There's still, I know there's Paw Patrol. My favorite Yeah, Yeah, Yeah song. That's a joke I like, but we'll no longer continue going down the road, but that's okay. Um, Paw Patrol, as I understand, is one of the most popular kids shows but let's be honest i don't really know well we'll get there one day but but for now i'm enjoying not being in the sphere of uh children's entertainment except like literally that being my job <laughs> f you nl we're not kids we're adolescents and young adults all right fair enough i'm not gonna bite the hand that feeds on that one i also know that who's the other guy blippy he's another youtuber Rival YouTuber in many ways for the mind share of the nation's youths. Kids entertainment sucks. Look, someone's got to say it. Someone's got to be brave. I told this story. It was either Christmas or Thanksgiving, but we went to my uh, in-law's house. I'm not trying to insult kids entertainment necessarily. I'm just saying as an adult, it's very inane. But obviously. Um... But like, you know, my my nieces are intelligent for their age. And I know that sounds like a backhanded compliment. It shouldn't be. They're seven and four. They're not smart by adult standards. Like, I don't wanna... I'm not calling them stupid. I'm just saying that if you worked with somebody as an adult that said the things that they said, you would be like, you're talking like a little kid. But for their age, they're crushing it, you know? They're doing incredible work. They have the potential, without a doubt, to grow into not just smarter than average adults, but smarter than me. So slightly smarter than smarter than average. Literally like 0.01%. Um, anyway. But the entertainment that they watch on YouTube, I have to feel like... I don't like to use the phrase, rot your brain. But it kind of rotted my brain. Maybe they're gleaning something. Let me, I'll give you a little uh, reenactment of what most of it is like. Um, so a lot of it is just people singing covers of Disney songs. Fine, whatever, you know? I mean, I would rather watch the classic 1923 film Battleship Potemkin, but, you know, for some reason my sister-in-law, you know, she doesn't keep that Criterion Collection Blu-ray in her collection. Mind you, she has uh, all the Disney vault classics, Lady and the Tramp 7, Endgame. Anyway, but then, then a lot of stuff is just like, uh, it's basically Baby Shark, but for every single lesson that kids need to learn. So it'll be like, you know, don't run with scissors, 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 don't run with scissors. And then they play it once and you're like, they're like, Uncle Ryan, isn't that great? And you're like, best song I ever heard. And then they go, really? Oh, okay, great. Let's listen to it a hundred more times in a row and like sing along and do the actions. It, it, it'll drive you insane. But, you know, I think it's... Uh, 
again, like a kind of a young man's view of parenting that you're like, man, that must be really annoying. But I bet when you're a parent, and you get, you know, I know there's parents that watch these videos, but if you're a parent of a young kid, I bet like when your kid gets engrossed into some kind of video like that, you're actually just happy to have the respite. You're like, first off, pardon me, I had a little burp there. Um, first off, my child's entertained, so good for them. But secondarily, like, I'm not worried that they're gonna be, you know, going under the sink and trying to eat the dishwasher pods, you know? Instead, the, I can hear them, they're going, you know, brush your teeth, do 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 It's just, you know, okay, fair enough. I understand. I mean, it's not like adult entertainment, and I don't mean it like that, but it's not like that's that much better. Like, stuff that I watch on TV, I, I'm, adult brains are broken in, like, a different way. Like, when I look for stuff to watch on, on TV, if there's no sports on, because I'm a very, very uh, alpha male who likes to watch sports, including physical trials of strength and agility, uh, but if there's none of those on, I usually just try to watch stuff that I know I'm gonna hate because I, I want to laugh at it. So I'll, I'll look for something on TV, you know, don't shoot the messenger, but like, you know... It, so here's the thing. I know I'm bouncing and going back and forth between multiple different topics quickly here, but this is one that's really good. Uh, there is... So Ghost Hunters is a show about uh, liars who hunt ghosts. If you watch it for entertainment, Join the club. If you watch it because you think that one in eight American houses are haunted by a specter, look, I'm not, again, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. You can believe in what you want to believe. Um, I guess I'm, I'm a skeptic. All right. But one time when I was four and took Benadryl, I saw a, a shadow move past my room. And I said, Mom. And then my mom wasn't there, dude. She was at work. So how do you explain that? I don't know. I wasn't there. You think I'm the shadow? How am I supposed to know? Anyway. Look, I didn't really mean to go down this road. Again, wait. I don't really care what you believe in supernaturally as long as you're like a, a decent human being. It doesn't really bother me. But also learn how to take a joke, straw man. Um, there's... A, a theme in Canadian TV, which is that every American show, we'll just call it uh, Roger's Law. Every Canadian, or every American television program has a Canadian analog that's worse. And Canadians don't shoot the messenger, okay? I, I mean, the only, there's, I mean, there's an exception to every law. Daniel has told me that, you know, in many ways, Canadian Big Brother is better than American Big Brother. That's the only counterexample that I can think of to Lion's Law. You know, you got American Idol, you got Canadian Idol. Who are the judges on American Idol? Simon Cowell, Paula Abdul, Randy Jackson. Who are the judges on Canadian Idol? I don't even remember. Do they, I think, I can't remember a single one. Canadian Idol judges. Sass Jordan. Okay, so she was like a two-hit wonder from the 1980s. Farley Flex, who I believe hosted Rap City on uh, on Much Music. I might be wrong. He's best known as being a judge. You see, this is he's best known for being a judge in the reality series Canadian Idol. You're the show isn't supposed to make you. You're supposed to make the show. Anyway, I'm not trying to get down like be that anyway. And then, I remember Zach Werner. Zach Werner, every talent show that came out after American Idol had to have a dude who was just like Simon Cowell, but from that country. It's, it, you know, don't... If it ain't broke, don't fix it, I guess, but... You know, he was the guy who would be like, you know, Sass Jordan would be like, I love this, You'll, you've given me life, you're inspiring. And then Zach Werner's like, it's not that good. Anyway. So, in keeping with the theme, we have a television, uh, I mean, we have cable, because I'm 100 years old, and, uh, don't do that, by the way, it's an extreme waste of money, but, without doing that, how would I be able to see, uh, Canadian Ghost Hunters, which I believe is called Knock Knock Ghost, and I actually have to, and I know it sounds like it's from Thor Ragnarok, Knock Knock Ghost, but I gotta, like, I actually wanna look it up now to see if it's real. 
because like if it's not meant to be a parody because at first I was watching it and I was like this is a parody this is a parody of ghost hunting and I gotta say owned but I think it actually is real and I didn't just fever dream it dude forget the item room who cares we have infinite items locked away in our in our d6 right now the reality stone so, again, one of Dan's most enduring but correct bits is like, you know, what's the silly Canadian name for an American uh, television analog? Yeah, you guys have ghost hunters. We have knock-knock ghosts. I wish it weren't true, but what can I say? The man, he's right. What is happening here? Do we have chaos? What's, what's going on here? Just want to see. Okay, Mulligan's fine, but we're gonna reroll anyway. Dead shots. I mean, a lot of these items are good. Let's be realistic. But we're we have twenty one rate of fire and uh, two damage. That's no good. All right. Let's see. Knock, knock, ghost. You know what? I don't. I still don't know if this is real. Richard Ryder, Brian Doyle, and Jim Hunt travel around Canada in hopes of discovering proof of the existence of an afterlife. It's a Canadian reality television program. The Wikipedia article is literally like a sentence long. It's hosted by a comedian, okay? Whose Wikipedia article is also a sentence long. It was nominated for Best Reality or Competition Program or Series at the 5th Canadian Screen Awards. Well, that's, you know, more, po more power to you, I guess. So I still don't really know, to be honest. It has a 6.6 .6 on IMDb, which is actually horrendous. People only go on IMDb. Like, 80% of people on IMDb go there to give something a 9 or a 10, and the other 20% go to give it a 0. So just mathematically, anything scoring under, like, a 7 is a real crapshoot, but... I get it. It's not the show's not for you, NL. Kate's been watching some ghost hunting stuff. I've, I've, I, I'm proud of my wife all the time, but I don't know if I've ever been more proud than after she watched a bunch of Korean ghost hunting stuff, and uh, she was like, "You know what? I don't think I believe in ghosts anymore." And I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> she's done it." <laughs> if you can watch that stuff and come away. Uh, more skeptical, I guess I'm proud of you. I mean, I'm not trying to, again, crap on anybody's fun. I would listen to horror stuff, you know. Uh, you know, I read some horror stuff from time to time. And, and cinematically, you know, I'm a big believer, as snobby as it sounds, in the concept of prestige horror. You know, horror movies that are not just scary because, you know, a cat knocks over a glass bottle and it, the music's crank super loud. But, you know, that create a genuine sense of, uh, of unease and dread. Um... What is this run, and why do I love it? But, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, like, it's not real, right? I mean, I, I don't even, I'm a coward, because I threw right at the end, even though I'm like, what I should have said is, it's not real, right? It's, it's TV. It's got to be a lot of, I mean, I'm just, you take it from somebody that works on, you know, I don't want to make myself seem like I'm doing a, you know, more important job than I am. But I work on media, you know, like six days a week, eight to ten hours a day. Sometimes you struggle to come up with stuff to talk about, to find good fodder. How on earth are you going to produce a 30-episode season of television? You have to find 30 haunted locations. Even if one of them was haunted, which I obviously don't believe that it was... You don't think that at some point they might reach the... They're fudging the numbers and they're like, Well, it turns out the old McMurray estate wasn't actually haunted at all, but, you know, we got sponsors. We gotta have this on the producer's desk by Tuesday. Maybe just, you know, loosen the pipes a little bit so they rattle and go, Did you hear that? <laughs> I... I think I, I don't know if I'm going in too deep here. It's hard because I know that, like, you know, with my demographics, there's probably the vast majority of people are like, get them. 
And I'm like, yeah, I know. But, you know, there's also people, like, Mathis does, uh, I don't know if he's into the paranormal, but, like, Chiluminati is kind of into that, like, unsolved mystery sort of stuff. And I like watching that as entertainment. Like, you know, some of those unsolved mysteries episodes are basically like, this dude got abducted by aliens. And I'm like, no, he, no, he didn't. But, like, let's hear his story anyway. It'll be fun. Um... But, uh, you know, I know there's people that like the supernatural as well. I don't know, it's weird. I think, like, I like stories about the supernatural, especially when they're played off as being real, as long as everybody's in on the joke. Like the no sleep sort of stuff, you know what I mean? But then who was phoned? But, um, they have this thing called a, a spirit box. Have you ever seen it? It's basic. I'm pretty sure it's just, like, a bad radio that keeps constantly, uh flitting between stations, but because the human brain is, like, trained to recognize patterns, it, it almost, and I do mean almost, I don't think it really sounds like people talking, but they'll be like, let's bust out the spirit box, and then the spirit box will go like, and they go, did you hear that? It said, get out. <laughs> I want to reiterate, we're coming in peace. Why do you want us to get out? I guess it's harmless at the end of the day. Unless, I don't think they're going to these places being like, hey, we'll bust these ghosts for you for like a hundred grand. So I guess it's relatively harmless. I'm not, you know, it's only entertainment, as Jay-Z said. This is an interesting run. Yo, are you getting that? That's uh, the lottery ticket numbers for this week. That's the 649. That's a Canadian joke for you. It's true, though, that for every Canadian... Or for every American television program that hits a reasonable level of success, there is a Canadian version that is largely inferior. That's not to say there's no good Canadian TV. It's to say there's very little good Canadian TV. What's what's the best Canadian television program? The local news. Yo, NL, put some respect on Murdoch Mystery's name. <laughs> That's not fair. I've never seen Kim's Convenience, and I've also never seen Craps Creek, which isn't called Craps Creek. But I hear that those are those are pretty good. But I don't watch them because they come on too early. I'm still working at 7 p.m. usually. Or I'd rather watch the live broadcast of Jeopardy. Okay? From mysteriously creaking floorboards to unexplained light shows, is it paranoia or the paranormal? At least they're posing it as a question. I don't know. I don't want to, like... Considering the fact that the show is hosted by a comedian, maybe it exists in that weird um, space that I also... Oh, my God. Master of knives. That doesn't really make any sense. Um... It's like we popped a cloak and dagger in Slay the Spire. That being said, we do have tiny planets, so it's hard to aim them. Um, stars, High Priestess. It doesn't matter what we use here. You know, you know the space where like everything's a bit, so nothing's a bit, but everything's still a bit. That's like where the NLSS is. Cue this guy getting on Twitter. It's just a bit, dude. Oh, do we have sad bombs? What am I doing? They, oh my god, you see our snake knives? <laughs> you know you want it. Anyway, that's how I spent my last couple of days. We will probably reroll this run. It. I, I never should have gotten rid of uh, our Tech X run. Like, that was the dream. But I'm just trying to get to Guppy, and I'm surprised we haven't gotten there yet. But I will say, very, very successful... Uh, D100 run because we saw some synergies I ain't never seen before like this one right here for example it's not even you know very good still got tiny planet so we're probably coming you know pretty close to the end of our uh, rope here but we still have uh, epic fetus and or dr. fetus because they cannibalize one another we also have uh, a life to come back? Okay, just stop walking into the shot. That's just impatience. We're gonna win unless we roll into something horrible. Mm. 
Maybe Bookworm. Although we already have 2020, so who cares? Um, who cares much? Again, I hate to say it, but, you know, Dan's right. America has uh, music television, MTV. What does Canada have? Much music. America has Hulu. What does Canada have? Crave TV. I mean, we both have Netflix, but you get the idea. <laughs> America has In-N-Out Burger. Which is just In-N-Out, I guess. What does Canada have? Cali Burger. America has Hardee's. Canada has Harvey's, but I, I'll tell you. Harvey's is better than any Carl's Jr. I've ever been to. We don't need to pay Paris Hilton to be in the advertisements. Uh, yeah, I guess I should point out, there's Canadian things that are better. Like, Canadian food and media properties better than their American counterparts. For example, Canadian A&W. Absolutely slaps. American A&W, I've heard it's a, it's a garbage fire. They're owned by two different entities. It's not just that we got different tastes. Yo, Guppy? But how? We, we've rolled every item a thousand times. How is it conceivable we have not become Guppy yet? I don't know if I'd say that's incredible, but it is surprising. Yo, pretty good. All right, so we're got 25 wins in a row. What did I say like three weeks ago? I said, I'll be happy. You know, my, my first tier of locked in happiness, like on who wants to be a millionaire, where once you, hilarious. Once you cross like a thousand bucks, you get to keep it. You can't dip over that or under that, I should say. Um, 30 wins. 30 wins is like an impressive, competent streak. It's not anything to write home about. No one's going to make a post on the subreddit about it, but, you know, you got to get past 30 to get anywhere else. Not to mention, on every single one of these 30 runs, I've filled them with 45 minutes of commentary about absolutely nothing. <laughs> That's so when I say that I only watch sports and stuff that I hate uh, to laugh at it, that's not totally true. The second thing I look for, if no good sports are on, um, is is any television network playing reruns of Seinfeld or Golden Age Simpsons. And you'd be surprised, the answer is yes, like a third of the time. Not as much as I would like, but it is pretty amazing that, you know... Both of those shows essentially ended 20 years ago, and yet, at any given point, you can find television networks still playing. Okay, there's Guppy. What is this? Oh my lord. So I'm not freaking, because we, uh, we have the D4. But this is a very strange ride. It was a really bad time to get nine lives, to be honest, but it did give us Guppy. Pretty much toasted this dude, too. I really... I thought we'd... Alright, it's a win. Um, that was weird. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. I'll set a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!